Oh. They did say that. Okay. Hi, everyone. Welcome to this weekly Wednesday live stream. We do these every Wednesday at 2 p.m. Central Time. I'm Tim Von Rieden, better known as Von Art Online, joined by my co-host, Sean Price, better known of... Art of Price Online. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and we do these weekly Wednesday live streams every Wednesday, and t- typically the topic is discussed a few hours beforehand, or we'll give a week in advance. Next week, we're going to be doing a critique session, so if you want to be a part of that, I'm going to have Sean create a little (laughs) message board in our Discord that you can post your images on. So if you want a live critique on the stream next week, be sure to post your images on there. We would prefer, I guess, no, I would would do digital as well. So traditional or digital, doesn't matter. We'll critique both. And yeah, I think we're going to get started. Today, we're going to do a little bit more of a fundamental uh, live stream. I think this is something that we both want, or at least I wanted to share with you guys as... I feel like this is often overlooked in the art community, at least with younger artists or artists that don't really do these kind of studies too often. But if you can learn how to work with convex and concave on a simple small matter, then you'll be able to do it on a larger scale when you're doing more complex and more detailed object I think objects. Is so blurry. There we go. There you go. Um, uh, also, too, with uh, when it comes to stuff like working with these little tiny basic shapes and everything, um, basic shapes are literally like the basis of all type of artwork that we do. Mm-hmm. You know, whether we go into it, like whether we go into it of, uh, you know, not putting down basic shapes and just straight up like putting lines down and making something. Still, at the end of the day, you can break everything down into a basic shape. And I know that I, I feel like I'm like this weird like shape advocate in the house. To where I'm just kind of like, thank you very much, Roger Rodrigo Lucas. Thank you very much. Um, but, but yeah, I feel like I'm this weird, like, basic shape advocate in the house to where I'm like, everything should be a shape. You know, everything should fit in a shape or be a shape or something like that. So understanding how to, um, you know, what is it shade? Is that what it would be called or anything like that? I guess just or, to see an object more 3D yeah. or more in a form that is tangible. I think too often I see art that looks very flat and it's meant to be in more of a realistic style. Yeah. And I know that there's styles that kind of cater to a more flat looking or stylized look. But when you're going for shape and form and it just misses the mark, hopefully the stream today will help you kind of recognize oh, where you fall. Mine's upside under. down. Go. That's why it was like so far over. I was like, why is this so, what is actually going on here? So the way that we're going to do the stream today, thank you, Gaw88. That is so loud. Hold on. <laughs> Every time that happens, it's a little distracting. Um, so the way that we're going to work is, <laughs> thank you, Manisha Chan, for following. Oh, boy. Yeah, I don't, thank why you does so it much. do double? Oh, That's also, so too, uh, one thing, too. Um, if you guys have any questions or anything, that remember to put at Von Art right before uh, the thing, and we will get to them as much as we can. I think this is going to be kind of a little bit of a talk-heavy one. Um, yeah. So we probably, I mean, just you know, be in mind, we probably won't be able to get to every question, but we'll do our best. So me and Sean are both going to do this at the same time. He's going to do square. I'm going to do a circle. And you can tell that they look and they start the same. So then it's up to us as artists or as like magicians to make magicians. the illusion of having it feel dimensional. That's all that art is. It's one big trick yeah. on the eye. It really is, honestly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So... We're going to start off with that, and then the second shapes that we're going to do later is going to show the difference between a hard edge and a soft edge. These are going to be hard edge objects. objects. So you can imagine like a controller on a video game pad. It has a very, well, I guess it has a little bit of a lip, a little soft edge. But what's a better example of a hard edge thing going in or out? Mm. I get you. (laughs) What? Man, what kind of button is there where it's like purely, like a purely like a hard edge? Yeah, pure hard edge button. Like one of these, I guess. It'd be, no, those, it'd be those are soft edge though. You sure? A little bit. Yeah. I mean, you would think like if there was There's a, a bit of a, a button on like another surface, I think would be a hard edge. I don't know actually. Yeah. Right. I mean, maybe. I mean, I think it depends on maybe how far it's actually coming out maybe Maybe, oh you know what actually with my circles i'll have more of a rounded push up and push down and then you do more of an edge i can do that yeah Yeah. okay that's what we're gonna start off doing all the time okay so i guess to start off what is the difference between convex and concave 
Convex is an angle that slopes inward. Concave, or no, I'm sorry. Convex is outward. Concave is inward. Concave is inward. Yeah. And it, the way that I always remember it is concave sounds like something's caving in. So yeah, I, mean, I don't know. It's a cave. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if that helps you guys, but that's the way I like to remember it. And convex and is convexical. Is that how you remember it? No. <laughs> <laughs> So we're it gonna have, I think, the same type of light source. It's gonna be slightly. So I guess I guess we could just be side. like we could be just like out, in. Yeah, there you go. You know, there you go. If it's, yeah, very fundamental lesson today, guys. <clears throat> so the way that I'm gonna start shading my shirt circles, and then I'll have Sean explain you how have, he does his squares. You got some sh going shwish, on shwish, today. Shwish. Yeah, yeah, I know. Uh, is I'm gonna slowly work and build up my shading. But I'm going to show you how the light source is very important because where it lands kind of indicates where I'm going to be shading the shadow areas and where the light will be falling. And it's a lot about gradients, especially when I'm doing a, a softer edge. Mm -hmm. So imagine for my circles, it's like pushed in and pushed out. Is that where you want your light source to come from? Yeah. yeah. And then for Sean, he's going to do a little bit of a harder edge, but same light source. And his is, is going to be a little less about gradients and more about planes because he's working with squares. So... Let's go ahead and get started on that. Let's do the convex one first. Yeah, yeah. Wait, so for me, sun. the way that I look at it is I know the light source is going to be strongest right here. And I'm not going to really touch it with my pencil. If anything, I'm going to work the terminator line first, which is where the shadow falls off from the light. And I typically will then build it either way. So then I kind of know what value number I'm putting on each. And I won't go too dark or too light either way. So then I think the way that we're going to uh, kind of explain this is just back and forth. Yeah, yeah, that's So fine. then you can then I start talking. I know yeah. with, with me, it's, it's the first thing is to, to find the edge. Basically, if you were to imagine this in a 3D space, instead of going from a shape, now you have to bring it to a form, which is, you know, 2D, 3D, um, to imagine where you want your edge to be. Uh, I mean, you can either pull it out pretty far or you can either kind of keep it, um, you know, keep it pretty close to uh, each plane to be close to each other. Um, so with that, you find your edge, and to me, I kind of imagine uh, a concave or a convex uh, cube basically as a keyboard key. You know, just look down at your keyboard, and that's essentially what you're drawing, basically. So you kind of have your edge kind of out where you need it, and so you have this little part right here. And then after that, um, I don't know if like I mean, I'm assuming you have Terminator shadows in cubes, correct? I mean, anything, yeah. really, yeah, yeah. It would be, like, right it'd under there. It would be all, it would be right under there. So, pretty much, you kind of just level it out, really. Or at least just show, like, where your basic edge should be. So then, with, I have a rather basic shading so far. And what I'm going to do, and what Sean will do after, is I'm also going to have a cast shadow. And I'm going to have it be kind of a similar mid-range of a shadow. And if my light source is coming from that direction, the shadow will land around here. But the way that I like to do my cast shadow is a little lighter than the edge of the object that I'm working with. Like this. There might be some bounce light coming back on the sphere. This one will be a bit lighter. But I do like this very dark kind of edge where it sits on. I feel like this is also too like kind of like a light source lesson as well. Yeah. You know. Which is something I think <laughs> I feel like you and I don't really follow sometimes. <laughs> um Oh, oh, your side might be less focused. You might need to focus your thing. I can't. My that. camera's broke. Oh, you can't? Mm -mm. Oh man, do you want to yeah, like sorry, guys. lift it up a little bit or I mm -mm. <laughs> All right. Well, I one day I think I have to get a new IPvo camera, so it might just be a little blurry, but at least Sean's is in focus. It's okay. Um, I'm also creating a very light neutral background color. This to me helps make the highlight pop in any drawing that I'm doing because when I'm adding a one or two value in the background, that highlight, which is a zero, the paper color essentially, becomes lighter by contrast. Uh, there's one thing that I always like to do is kind of, so I know that if, if, if any of you've seen, you know, any of my artwork out there or anything like that, I tend to do this thing to where I create um, shapes within the shadows. I'm not going to do too much of that today, 
uh, and everything. I think that's just more just a stylistic choice um, to kind of like break up shadows a little bit, but it definitely does help. And I do like to kind of create um, shadow shapes and, and kind of just by that is if you want to understand values just a little bit more, um, really, really look at something and really actually outline the values. This is, and like this is this isn't you know much of the lesson, but um, outline it to where like let's say if you want your darkest part, you know, like you can literally just go in and kind of go from there, and you create this little shape that kind of separates um, separates these these values and everything like that, just to understand them just a little bit more. If you if you're really struggling with values, you know. I also have a value scale as well, sometimes if you want to. Ooh. Oh my, Tim. Kia of Waukesha. I got a new phone, and I swear, sometimes the names that come up on here, I know I didn't type them in, so I'm like, why? How did that even happen? We're going to turn that off, though. Okay, so then this is my example of a convex. So now, when I'm going into concave, as Sean's finishing up, oh, don't forget the cast shadow. Oh, sorry. Uh... As I'm going to go on to the concave now, it's going to be almost opposite thinking, where with convex, I can imagine, okay, how far up is this object raised? How is the light going to fall on it? And I almost have to think of it in an opposite sense. So now I'm looking at it, and I know that the light, when the, the object's pushed in, the light source is actually going to be strongest around here. And I'm going to have the shadow area be strongest where my light source was in the first one. And that's what will give that opposite illusion that this is pushed in. And oftentimes, if you're not sure, I mean, we're doing a very, very simple small scale with these square and circles. It's so funny how you, you're you like way more familiar with drawing with um, a soft edge, just because everything I do is such a, it has a hard edge on it. I'm a realism artist. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't, you know. So as I'm building this up, oh no, I was going to say that... Uh, Take reference photos of whatever you're looking at. And I know that it may not seem like this has a direct connection to characters or world building uh, environment pieces, but everything can be broken down, like Sean said, to a, a, a simple form or shape. And if you can imagine breaking it down first and then figuring out how to shade it, the details can be laid on top of that, essentially. You don't feel like you have to rush right into it. So let's, I'm going to slowly build this Oh, dude, you're like further ahead, and I am still here. That's okay. Yeah. So you can see, as I'm building it up, I'm not pushing down too hard. I'm letting it build up kind of gradually. But I know where I need to push my values darker, and I need I know where I need to push them a little lighter. So a lot of this does come with oh, experience and time and knowing where to put it. So don't feel intimidated if you're you're not getting it right away. Yeah, yeah. Also, I hope this blue kind of shows up on the thing. I feel like maybe I should actually switch to doing what you're doing. To using graphite instead of I think it shows, unless you yeah. want to turn the exposure down. Nah, it's a little it's a little light. Cuz it looks a little bit darker on the thing. I think I'm going to switch to here. Actually, do you have an extra one of those? Which, what? What are you using? Like? One HP. Sure. Perfect. So once again, I'm going to give that neutral, very, very light value around it. Make the highlight appear a bit more drastic. Now, as I'm looking at it, I know that I can punch the values a bit darker to really give some more contrast. It's a good sound. Of the pencil sharpening? Yeah. Mm hmm I'm also, right now, I'm kind of obsessing about how this looks right now. <laughs> Take your time. It's okay. Yeah, right. We got two hours, and I'll finish this then. <laughs> <laughs> so, already, you can kind of see, it almost looks like I made a marble in, like, the, the hole that the marble is supposed to fit in. So that's good. We're giving the illusion of depth on a flat surface, essentially. And like I said earlier, that's usually the trick of a lot of realism art is depth. 
Oh, dude, that's so much better. See, people can now see that on this. Yeah, that's so much better. Yeah, there you go. Sorry. No, it feels better. Sorry, people. I feel like the, the blue was not working. I keep interrupting you. Go. <laughs> no, I'm used to it. Oh, yeah, right? <laughs> so, yeah. And this applies to a lot of things that I draw in character stuff, but it's usually on the objects that they're wearing. So if they have, let's say, I don't want, I, I guess a button would be the best example. That would be a convex object and it has ridges to it. So I guess while Sean's doing the squares, I could do a, a button example and show how this can translate then into kind of real life application or in our case, real drawing application. So let me do another circle here. So I'm going to add an inner rim. So the way that I'm going to work with this is the inside of the button, this area, is going to be more flat. You know what? Let me try zooming in. Does that make it more in focus? No. Well, maybe a little bit. And the way that I'm going to treat this outer ring here is I'm going to treat it all convex. So it'll give kind of that bubble ridged look. And I'll show you how I'll do that. And then the inside is going to be more flat. So same thing, light source over here, overhead. And immediately I know that the light source is going to be strongest here and here. So I'm going to push my values where I know that it'll be the darkest. And you can tell, even with just the initial shadow placement, all of a sudden, the light source should be pretty easy to distinguish in terms of what direction it's coming from. Also, one thing too, is if you guys are having uh, trouble, especially like coming up with like characters or anything, or like how to like, um, light them uh, completely and stuff like that or like understanding where you know your value should go um just you know do like a quick little like circle with almost like literally put like a light and everything um and it, it, like it kind of like what we did to where we drew these little suns and had an arrow pointing um actually having that creates a literal sense yeah. of light in your brain and uh, it, it makes your brain, you know, actually think of forms of just like, okay, cool. Like now that I know where my light's coming from, um, that's what I can start working with. Yeah, absolutely. I definitely need to sharpen the pencil. I thought I could just wing this kind of dull pencil, but this, I'm getting too small here. I guess while I'm doing that, I'll answer some questions. So. Yeah, I'm just, wanna, I'm, dude, I'm going crazy. Go the con dude, cave. I'm what are you crazy, doing? man. No, man. <laughs> this needs to be perfect. Uh, do, do, do. Look at that. Look at that. Alex said, look shapes that. are 2D, forms are 3D, I think. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Look at that. Boom. Terminator line right there at the very bottom. No, that's not the Terminator line. No, that's where it hits. That's where the, the, the oh, wait, it's that's Oculus. That's occlusion, occlusion shadow. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Oops. Oculus, sorry. <laughs> that's occlusion. the Oculus Rift. That's the Oculus Rift, yeah. Uh, Manisha Chan says, how do I avoid being incredibly jealous? Uh, actually, I mean, in a serious way to answer this, I think this is actually kind of a problem with a lot of artists in our community where I can kind of see a bitterness and kind of an unhealthy competition arise. And I, I'm saying that not only from what I see in others, but even in myself, I notice that sometimes artists that we can tell have a technical understanding or if they, if I see an artist that they're just really creative um, I get jealous to some degree, and I want a part of that. And I think it's been nice being so competitive that I like being like, okay, I got to prove that I'm just as competitive or I'm just as technically strong. But for some artists, and it's unfortunate, I feel like we get really jealous and sometimes bitter, and we tear each other down to make ourselves feel better. Mm -hmm. So how do you avoid that? I want you to look at artists that you look up to or that you are impressed by on some level, and I want that to inspire you. I want you to see their work and be like, I want to work towards that and see it as a goal that you're working towards rather than just like writing it off. Because I think too often that can be very hurtful to an artist in the long run. Concave. 
Uh, Lychee says, do you find excessively using eraser is not useful of or drawing growth? Uh, I think an eraser is an essential tool. I think, but the thing, I think people, does OFR mean something? I think it's just of, maybe. Do you find uh, excessively using eraser is not useful of drawing growth? I think. Um, but I, 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 I think that with an eraser, like, you can still... I think people treat an eraser as a way to, um, like, get rid of progress, essentially. You know, or not progress, but it's, like, get rid of, like, you know, mistakes and everything like that. And there's definitely a thing you do that. But I also think, too, with an eraser, like, it's very uh, essential, you know, to use as its own tool on its own to where you can actually create edges. Mm -hmm. You can create edges and highlights and, and everything like that, you know. Um, rather than looking at an eraser, like, okay, this is what an eraser does. Uh, you look at all of your kind of art, um, you know, all of your art tools and everything like that uh, as stuff that, you know, you can use. I hope that was the question, by the way. I didn't know <laughs> if I was just, I just realized me like yammering about an eraser is a little silly, but. The way that I like to utilize my eraser, it's usually more with a kneaded eraser. If I go too dark with a value, I'll try to lift yeah. it with a kneaded eraser. But with the mono eraser, can I use it by the way, the mono eraser. Yeah, I'm actually. It can usually edge, edge out yeah. an area That's that maybe about to do. a bit off or slightly, almost. Uh, I don't want to say it imperfect, but it could be a bit pushed, a bit jutted out more than you would initially like. And if I really want a nice slim highlight, I'll use the mono eraser and just like edge it. On where I want that highlight. Like that? Yes, exactly. Uh, Guy Webb, is Tim Sideless Focus? Yeah. I know. I'll have to get a new um, a new camera. It's really disappointing, too, because I've had this for a while, and this is the first time it's been kind of rough. Solomon says, just stopping in for a quick second, but I hope both of you are doing well and not falling apart yet. Yeah, I'm doing great. I feel like hmm. con season was... Very enjoyable, and it's still going, it's, man. We're in like a weird halftime mode, where it's gonna yeah. pick up again in like three weeks. It's gonna pick up in the summer. No one. Oh, I guess not for you, yeah. Because in May we have three. You have three in May. Yeah. <laughs> and the only reason I sound probably defeated of that is just because I'm an artist first, and I I don't even want to say I'm a salesperson second because if I had like a list of job titles I think salesperson would be like near the bottom I'm actually pretty bad at it I would to just be like to say I'm a creative first and <laughs> a sales representative second I literally sit behind my booth <laughs> I I never mention deals I never like oh by the way if you get this one you can get it free like I'm very bad at doing that kind of stuff but I do enjoy talking with people I really much enjoy meeting new artists especially this past weekend C2E2 I was able to walk around um, I did a shout out on my Instagram for those of you who saw it to all the artists that I met and did art trades with. And I'm just realizing more and more how alike I am to a lot of these artists and how much I appreciate people that are on a similar path without having to talk every day. It's like I already know a, a good chunk of their story just based on how I, my, my small interaction with them and well, the where their work is too, at. I think that, and something I think your dad has told you is that, that confidence is quiet, you know? Oh, yeah. Well... Yeah. Well, is that, does that apply or no? I don't. Um, I'm kind of in and out. Yeah, there's right definitely like a... Jeremy Bastian was at C2E2 this past weekend. If you don't know who he is, he does the Pirate Girl book series. They're super intricate, detailed, uh, not even pen books. They're actually brush pen. And I would definitely go check them out. I'll type it in in the comment section. But his name's Jeremy Bastian. And he is just confident. He is one of those people who... He just exudes it and never gets nervous. And when I went up to his booth, I think I was a bit nervous to talk to him just because I look up to him so much as an artist. And I think he was trying to, like, you know, <laughs> call me back down. But it's exciting when you meet an artist that you are generally, genuinely excited to meet and, like, proud of their work and hope that they continue doing more. So that was my moment for C2E2. Uh, Jopo says, how does Procreate compare to something like Photoshop? There's a new iPad which supports Apple Pencil. The new iPad is way cheaper than iPad Pro. Do you think a 9.7-inch screen is big enough to comfortably draw on? 
I mean, for you it might be. I think I'd be okay with a 9.7. Thank you, Beanie Baby, for following. Beanie Baby. Yeah, I I love my Apple iPad Pro. Photoshop is something that I don't think it's comparable to yet. I think Photoshop has way more tools and accessibility than iPad Pro, but iPad Pro has some really cool features that Photoshop does not. It has an auto record feature, which is really nice. And I would say test it out at the store first, like really work with the iPad for like a half hour at the Apple store, wherever you're getting this, because you don't want to be left with a tablet that you cannot draw with and that you're not comfortable with. So that would be my response to that. Alex says, how about some of convex and concave forms and horns? Yes. Oh, absolutely. Imagine, here, I'll zoom back out a little bit so it's more in focus. Thank you, Carissa, for following. My convex, imagine, I'm kind of thinking of it, thinking of it in Sculpt 3D or in ZBrush, where you have that uh, spherical tool, tool and it like can duplicate on itself as you pull it out. So essentially those are just convex forms that are being multiplied and uh, laid on top of each other. And they would still have that same shading. Now imagine if you stretched the sphere and then ellipsed it down, that's how you get those cool looking horns. I may do an example of that. I do wanna do uh, a soft edge and hard edge example, but mm -hmm. I, I feel like we have enough time. So I could do a horn and then explain, I could do a horn that has a convex and concave side to it. I think that'd be pretty cool. Oh, I could do a ram's horn because on the front it would be convex and then underneath it would be concave. Uh, Yan says, unrelated question, sorry, I've got a cheap 6B pencil and a more expensive 2H. The 6B is way more grainy than the better 2H. Is buying a better 6B going to help? Most likely, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, if you're noticing that your pencil has a literally cheapness, if that's the word that you want to describe the feel and look of the result when you're using it, yeah, I would definitely... It's so invest weird, in man. I actually, I've been starting to notice because I think you used these before, the one pencils that I use. Um, and uh, oh yeah, yeah, you were like, man, like these, these are bad. <laughs> you know? But it's it's weird because it's like I don't know. I mean, compared to this right now, this this I mean has a waxy actually, feel to you it. You should try. Yeah. Try it. If you guys don't know what these are, these are called black wing pearls. They're kind of expensive pencils, but the lead's really soft. But you have to do it on like a new area. Oh, You'll okay. see like how buttery it can be. Oh my. Yeah. Yeah. Oh <laughs> like yeah. it touches the paper and it leaves a mark. And it leaves like a bigger, yeah, you got to really like control like your, your mm -hmm. pressure. Like so if you have a good sense of control, oh, I definitely recommend these black wing pearls. I know, right? Yeah, Elaine yeah. let me borrow, or she gave me one at a convention and immediately I kind of fell in love. And the cool thing about these pencils, I don't know if you know it on mine, Sean, but it leaves the graininess of the paper because yeah, you have to push yeah. so light. So it leaves the little divots that the texture naturally creates in the paper, Yeah, which is really cool. I love paper texture, man. Me too. Alex says, when drawing with pen and ink, it is very important to follow the contour of the form with each stroke. Do you pay any attention to cross contour when rendering with graphite or is it about, all about the values? Uh, it depends. Like I tend to shade in small circles, but I do work a little I bit go side in... To side. So yeah, Sean does side to side. Everyone has like their way of doing it. I know if I'm doing a larger area, I'll do like a cross hatch and then I'll fill it in with the small circles. So whatever way works best for you. But I will say it does help when you're doing kind of bigger forms to go in the direction that the form that you're trying to create naturally goes in. And because no, then... no, no, that that's yes. Yeah, <laughs> because if any of your pencil strokes are seen or left over, the viewer it'll just create more of the illusion of that shape because of those lines that are left over. But if your lines are ev kind of everywhere, it loses the initial direction that the shape is going in. Um, no, kind of just to jump on what you said and just basically just agree with you a, <laughs> a lot. Um, uh, yes, th this was one thing actually, uh, for most of you um, that do know me and everything like that, I was a tattoo artist for a long time. Um, when it came to tattooing, you're working with these, this is just more of a thing, you're working with these needles that they don't, you know, they, they tend to go in one direction. They're, they're basically a very, mm -hmm. you know, it's a very, like, rigid thing. I mean, you can't go backwards, you can't go this and everything. So you had to follow the form of the line. So you had to follow, you basically had to, like, um, shade and, like, you know, render out um, 
parallel with the line that went with it, the outline that went with it. Um, I think this is kind of essential when it comes to creating any type of form or anything like that, um, is to kind of go parallel with, with what you're working with, but that's just me. Um, I know that there's probably some people who would be like, no, I go completely the opposite, and they probably get the same result somehow. Um, <laughs> you know, so th there's multiple ways to do it, but with, with, Thank you. with what, you know, Tim was saying and everything like that, like, yes, like, this is, this is something that I, I completely agree on. Um, yes, please follow your, follow your little rough outlines and, and the world will be okay. Actually, I'm going to make this a little bigger. All right, so while Sean's finishing up his concave. I hope I, I hope I'm like, what's, what's the word I'm looking for? Never mind, keep going. <laughs> this, is, this is just a check during the stream. Uh, yeah, you're doing great. <laughs> uh, I'm going to be doing an example of a soft edge and a hard edge concave shape. So I'm going to do a triangle. So I'm going to do it pushed in. It's almost like if you're making cookies, if I don't know why you're making triangle cookies. But imagine the cookie. Why not, dude? You have like the, the big sheet of the cookie batter, and then you're cutting it out with the, what are those called? Cookie cutters? Yeah. <laughs> and you you have the triangles. So that's essentially what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be cutting it out and trying to create the illusion of like a hole, like a very small hole. And I'm going to show you the difference between a soft edge and more of a hard edge. I feel edge. like I just made a hole with the... Yeah, I mean, that's kind of what literally the point was. It's literally concave, the hole. Yeah. You can't really do do much with a square. It's, it kind of goes one way or the other way. There we go. Okay, so then this one's going to be soft edge. Or no, this one's going to be hard edge, and then this one's going to be soft. Actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use my kneaded eraser. So this is a good example of when I would use my kneaded eraser and lift some of that triangle up. Okay, so for the hard edge... I'm going to treat it actually kind of similar to the way Sean did, where it's going to be like a cutout. So I know that there's going to be a cast shadow here. We're going to build it up. Dude, the you, whole point... Or these erasers up. work... No, it's just me just saying that these erasers work really well with graphite. They do, they do not like colored pencils. Oh, yeah. Color pencil is tricky. I mean, I'm telling you, man, like, I feel like I'm, like, this weird, like, I'm a graphite artist, but I use a colored pencil. <laughs> <laughs> like, I render things out, like, how you would with graphite. There we go. Oh, for those who are just... Coming in, yeah, we're talking about the difference between convex and concave forms and how you can apply that to real life applications. So we're doing these small little examples and then I'm gonna do a full ram horn. I wanna do a horn. Oh, do you too? Well, we gotta get, hey. up, get up reference and I'll just, I'll try and do like a little study of it. Yeah. So this is a very simple uh, hard edge cutout. I feel like triangle's not the most fun. But I'll also do a soft edge. So imagine it's like a slope almost on the edge here. And the light source direction is coming from the same direction as the three top examples here. And something that I want to work with more is this kind of soft edge approach. It's something that I know is in my future. And I think it's the next step for me to really push my stuff to another level. It's just, it's very new to me. And it's something that is just unfamiliar. But with anything that's unfamiliar in art, I feel like you got to attack it. And it's going to be frustrating. <laughs> I know there's times where I'm going to be frustrated with my work, which sometimes can lead into being frustrated in life. But it's something that I feel like I'm in a good position to push right now. So you might see some more soft edge stuff come from me soon. So it's almost like a soft edge cut to me is when you cut something in the sand with your finger. And then if the waves wash over it once, then it creates that nice soft ridge. It's like a nice slope compared to the very hard edge cut out here. 
what? I just I'm still working on this. That's okay. I feel like I got. It's just, I feel like we got the point down, and I'm just like I'm just making a hole, man. <laughs> well, let's see here. All right, we have like an hour to do a ram horn. I feel pretty confident with that. Do you feel pretty good about that? Oh yeah, I mean I'm probably you know I probably won't get like super far and everything like that, but I'll still enjoy doing it. There we go. Okay, yeah, those are the good examples. So you can see how Sean's also adding like this very small ridge, which the highlight then. You don't gotta go too crazy with it. I went a little exaggerated, but. <laughs> yeah, maybe a little slimmer. Yeah, that's why I'm kind of going in and. But it, it does give bit. the illusion of just a slight ridge where that cutout is. And any little extra detail you can add to something like that helps. And this is going to lead into a more detailed object, which we're going to do. So as we're doing the ram horn, you're going to see me add a lot of these really slim highlights everywhere. And you'll see how that affects the overall end result. So let me, should I Pinterest or Google image this? Uh, Let's Pinterest. Yeah, Pinterest, yeah. I like about Pinterest. Yeah, support your local Pinterest. Yeah. We'll do Ram Horn. <laughs> okay, I need to find a really good underside one. Um, no, this isn't the horn I'm thinking. Well, oh, this is actually before all this. Actually, Lashi has a question. Um. It says, for you guys, what styles you have? I'm curious um, at what kind of jobs you usually find um, that find you guys. Opportunity slash opportunities that come your way as freelancers, such as things like book covers, illustration pieces for specific personal commission clients, or things like commercial work that is used more of a way um, they might not see the light of day, perhaps like publicly or publicly such as concept art. Um, are cons the best place for you guys? I'm just curious to understand where jobs for artists such as you guys are available slash in what places. Um, yeah, so, uh, I will say that, um, I don't tend to get a lot of emails about commissions and everything like that. Um, I know with, with my stuff, it's I, the, the biggest one I get is actually a lot of tattoo designs people want me to do for them. Um, I think it's just kind of, I mean, I, I feel like both you and I always have like the, you know, the kind of the classics commissions things like, hey, can you do oh, a, yeah. a portrait of this or can you draw a tattoo design or can you do this and this and this? Those are kind of like the classics. But um, you just got done doing a, a couple beer labels. Um, yeah. And I actually just got an email from a, a metal band in Spain uh, to do a T-shirt design. Um, I, so I kind of got to um, go up on, you know, uh, follow up on that so it's like it, it's weird because i feel like as an artist like we all have like a style that we tend to do um or something like that uh but art specific especially freelance i think you're gonna do just a bunch of odd jobs honestly and it's the ones that you feel the most confident with that you kind of go with yeah and i've gotten jobs from conventions i've gotten from instagram i've gotten even one from etsy before you'll never know where you're gonna get a job from so put your feelers out everywhere because who knows maybe DeviantArt is the place where you'll get a job opportunity yeah. never discredit one based <clears throat> on the reputation that you may or may not think it has and honestly that would be my best advice is anywhere could be a job opportunity oh yeah absolutely and and one thing too is you know um this is one thing as well that I that I learned was um, was the type of work that you want to do, just start making it for yourself. If you want to be a concept artist, mm -hmm. just start making concept art. If you want to go and make book cover illustrations, make mock book cover illustrations. Very true. Um, you know, create a, if if you're talking about a portfolio, of something that you want to show people or something you just want to showcase. Uh, in general, though that type of work. Uh, that you're making and everything like that, you'll get that type of work. People will notice it and people will gravitate, especially art directors, you know. I mean, I feel like art directors specifically, and I feel like this is a talk for, for much, you know, for like a different stream and everything like that when it comes to you yeah. know, talking about freelance jobs and everything like that. It, it's funny, for the most part, Tim and I actually don't do a lot of commissions. We just mostly just work on personal work. Well, um, to be honest, I try to avoid it at yeah, this yeah. point. Because I feel like we're already overwhelmed. And con season can be stressful mm -hmm. as it is. So, like, even now I have two commission pieces that I'm backed up on, and that's on top of the beer birds that I had to do. Yeah. So, take <laughs> take your time into consideration. <laughs> if you really are too busy to 
fulfill freelance orders, don't take them right now. Yeah, yeah. Because you'll run into more problems with them being dissatisfied, you feeling like you're rushing. And I guess that's more of a problem if you have too many uh, freelance jobs on your plate. But to get them in the first place, I would say conventions are a great way to meet new opportunities. And I've Showcase met a lot of work, yeah. gallery people. I've met a lot of comic book artists. A lot of people that want me, my style, I guess, in a sense, to be a part of whatever project they're working on. I can't, I actually very rarely follow up on those because of how busy I already feel. But I would say conventions are a great place to get job opportunities from. I feel like rams are not the horns I'm actually looking for. Because the more that I'm looking at them, I want... I mean, this is I mean, close. it's kind of like concave, convex. But what if you look up... Um, like, this is pretty close, too. What if you look up, like, antelope type... Uh, do antelope have horns? They're the skinny, long ones that are kind of curved. What's the one I'm looking for? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, this is more ridgy. yeah. I mean, ram, I, can, I guess I can kind of make it up as I go. If you want one of these specifically. um, I like I like that one, honestly. This that, one? That one, yeah. All right, let's do that one then. Um, You know what I might do, actually? Ooh, sorry, Alan. I'm going to be also pulling up Alan Williams' work as my reference. As if I need more comparisons, right? Oh, also, too, guys, if you have any questions, uh, please put at Von Art before. Um, just so we can see them. I know that sometimes we don't uh, we don't see the questions very much, and we don't want to upset any of you guys. I, know, I feel like we. I always get all the questions, and we are caught up. Wait, did you scroll down? No, we were just there. I didn't even touch the thing. Where have we been? No, no, we're better than that. I feel like we I we will promise to get to every. Question. I feel like I see question marks, and I don't uh, <laughs> essentially see them. You know what I mean? Like I see the question. I, I, look, look, guys. I just need you to just put app on her, please. <laughs> <laughs> the only request we have. Okay, no, no, I feel pretty confident with being able to wing this. Okay. Uh, do you want me to open this on that screen as well for you? Sure. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So what we're gonna be doing now is we're gonna be taking a. Oh, this is not what I opened. Uh, wait, hold are we on. Just, are, we're basically just doing a study, right? Kind of? Kind of. I'm going to make it kind of more my own, if I was honest with you. Okay. Let me open this in a new tab. So the way that I'm going to be working um, my horn, I'm not sure how you want to treat this. I have no idea where my camera is. Oh, okay. There we go. But I guess on the side here, wait one second. There's so much. Do you want me to turn the light on? Because there's so many. I know, there's so much shadow. Shadows. In here. Yeah, yeah. Eventually, I'm going to move this station downstairs so we're not going to have this lighting problem. Can I just see what this looks like real quick? Yeah. If I turn this light on? But the way that I'm going to work with this horn right now is it kind of has this shape to it. Is that bad? Is it like super yellow? Uh, no, it's not horrible. Yeah. So the horn. Let's see here. It's a little, oh no, actually, it's pretty good. Yeah, it's not bad. So I'm going to make this area concave, and then the area on the top convex. So I'm going to show you how we're going to dip in and out and create a pushed out form and a pushed in form side by side. Mm -hmm. And kind of what we were saying before, these little guidelines, um, the the way that I'm doing the pencil direction will help it's, the overall end result. You know what that reminds me of? It reminds me of like the, um, I'm assuming if you've ever seen it, to where you've gone on Google and you type in like something drawing or something like that. And then it goes to a website. I think the website's called Dr Draco art or like dragon art or something like that to where it's like how to draw this. And they show like a circle and then they show like lines that like guide it oh, and yeah. everything to where like draw these lines and then make the rest of the thing. Yeah. You know, to where it doesn't make any sense. So, so you know what? I'm going to actually start this with an, a 2H pencil. Um, if you guys don't know the value scale, basically H pencils tend to be a bit harder, which tend to be lighter on the paper. And it's nice for creating a blueprint with these type of pencils. Oh, my study's right here. And that way, if you uh, push down hard, it won't create this very dark mark that's hard to lift with just, a kneaded eraser. Are you just doing the horn like... 
Oh wait, I'm not drawing on the thing. I'm kinda gonna make it my own. So I'm using this as like an initial style reference. How did this turn? What happened? Oh, I may have knocked it because oh. it's a tight cord here. <laughs> gotcha. So same thing. I'm gonna be looking at this reference. And you know what? For those of you who want to see the reference that we're working with, I'll put it in the Discord channel on our Wednesday weekly Wednesday stream. That is the image that we are working with. Um, Faith is calling you out. She said, I'm not sure why, but the concave sphere doesn't look concave to me. Maybe it's because I expect it to be convex. I feel like it's not tricking my eye. Not sure if that Ooh, makes any I sense. Um, I think you need a harder edge on this side. I guess I could create you Basically, you just edge. have to make a hole, honestly. No, but mine was like a... Here. A hill. It wasn't like a perfect Oh, straight. a hill. Oh you, oh, you wanted to just like that slight dip? Like imagine if a marble fit perfectly in a hole. Yeah, yeah, like that slight dip Yeah. type of thing. Okay, yeah, yeah. No, I get it now. I could see it. Maybe, I mean, maybe... Clean out of them, bro. <laughs> yeah, right. Maybe there, you might have went a little bit All too right, Let dark. me catch up with the questions. I feel like you just skipped three. I didn't. I, I went through whatever it's called. Light cheeks. Oh, there we go. Okay. Light cheeks says, thank you guys. That opens my eyes a bit. You're welcome. Uh, Kiana says, did you guys go to art school for art or any opinions on going to into art without formal education? Yeah, so Sean did not go to art school i did go to art school and most of the roommates except for no jonas did not uh, we went to art school at ai in schaumburg and my opinion has been pretty consistent for the past few years the way i see it is you do not need a higher education in art to get a job in the industry in today's day and age no what you need is a strong portfolio and you can get that outside of schooling the only difference though and why i think schooling can be important is because your peers typically are going to be around the same age range, like low 20s, early or early 20s, kind of late teens. And usually they're hungry. They are so eager in wanting to show what they got and what potential they have yet to show to the world. So being around that energy and that level of competitiveness helped me grow in school. And I am very thankful for that because I think that helped me grow really fast. Now, the thing is, though, I learned more from my peers than I did my educators. So when I look at my schooling education, I would say it was actually rather poor in terms of the level of quality, but I'm very thankful that I went. I still don't think it's worth the price tag, but I'm glad that I went. And I was offered a job at Pixar about four or five years ago. You were offered it, a job at Pixar? It was their Canada studio, though. Oh. So I had this tough choice where... I actually turned them down and I stayed with CG Cookie because I loved my job there. And I, I I think I had the best bosses I'll ever have in my life. And what was interesting, they didn't ask for my credentials. They only asked for my portfolio. So I always think about that when, when I talk to artists that are younger, on especially at the conventions where they bring out their portfolios and like, hey, can you look at this? And yeah, of course I will. And they talk about how they're really excited because they're going to art school in the summer and blah, blah, blah. Is it worth it? And every time, I kind of give them the same answer. It can be whatever you make of it. But don't rely on the education to get you a job. Don't rely on it to get you better. It's going to have to be on you. No um, amount of money yeah. that you pay will make you a better artist. You know, it's so weird how you and I do things differently. I get all my value. I get value in first. I I'm a line artist. As much as I, I don't want to admit it, I definitely am a line artist first. I know it's weird because like normally like I do. I mean, I, my stuff is so line heavy. Like I mean, it's just it's it's being held together by lines. But for the most part, like I, I mean, I I get my values in, man. I chunk them in. So oh, I'm not even on the screen. Yeah, oh my I'm gosh. On the screen. Not yeah, really. did you? Are, it, we are Everyone's probably a, like... Yeah, we are having a tough day. Let's see here. Oh, those are cool horns. But there's no concave. Those are all convex shapes. The reason that I wanted this ram horn... And I'll, I'll make the lines a bit darker. It's because these lines... 
and like this whole plane here is going to be concave like I had on my example up here. These concave and the lines that kind of bubble out are convex. So the reason that the ram horn is so great is because you get both and they're like meeting up side by side. Uh, Vohio Killer says, how important do you think selecting the medium art tool is and how do you know which is the right one for that specific piece? Uh, you, you don't. Yeah, you don't. I think whatever whatever you feel the strongest in and whatever one that you have the most interest in, I think it, that's kind of your, you know, your main guy. I definitely like explore, um, you know, what you want to do. But I think to break this down and <laughs> this is going to sound really funny to break this down in like video game terms. If anybody's ever played Super Smash Bros, like you have a main and then you have like a secondary. Um, and uh, I mean, I think for for you and I, like pencil, pencil would definitely be like, you know, our main oh, yeah. thing, you know, um, and then our secondary would be. Well, mine would be digital. Yours would be digital. Mine would be pencil. <laughs> Again. <laughs> <laughs> the way that I look at like what art piece deserves what, you'll know which tools you feel comfortable with and what tools really kind of show off your creative prowess. So for me, pencils definitely are the ones I feel confident in bringing out what I'm trying to showcase to the world. But that doesn't mean that I should only use pencils for, our, for the rest of my life. I think it'll probably be the main tool that I work with for the rest of my life, but that doesn't mean that I should just cut off any tool that's not a pencil. Let's see, huh? Red Panda says, any thoughts for a time management stream? I'd love to learn about that. And it's always interesting to hear about lives of freelancers. You know, it's, I, I feel like I have a really good sense of time management. I think because of the way I was raised and the way that my mom was very, I wouldn't say <laughs> over plan heavy on things. Like if we had a Thanksgiving dinner, she would plan it, you know, about a few weeks in advance and the table would be set a week in advance. And we weren't allowed to go in the living room or touch anything. Like she was that kind of you know, retentant about things. And I actually feel like it carried over into the way that I plan things. And especially with art. I mean, and when I worked at CG Cookie, that's why I started planning weekly Wednesday live streams. And every week at 2 p.m., I would just sit and do that. I'm usually pretty good at scheduling myself and sticking to that schedule. So I can definitely talk about that. I don't know, Sean, what you would want to talk about with time management streams. Um, I'm a little, I, I struggle with that, honestly. I I tend to be in my head a lot as an artist, um, which which tends to uh, take a big chunk out of my time um, during the day out if I if I get really really sucked into my head. Um, so yeah, I, I think you would be the better <laughs> that, honestly. You know, if I'm if I'm being honest, that. you know, like it's it's one thing that I I, I struggle with. And it's something that I, I feel a lot of artists that want to go in a freelance lifestyle have to pick up and acquire in some level. I feel like you do, just in small doses. Oh, yeah. I mean, there's there's definitely, I mean, you've seen me, you've definitely seen me, like, have, like, 16-hour days where I'm just sitting and being like, you know what, like, I'm, I'm putting headphones on, sorry, I'll see you around. Sure. You know, okay, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, there's times where you got to do that because if you have a deadline coming up, like it's you don't have anything to blame but yourself. And if you don't get it done, oh yeah, that's on you. That is on you. So the way that I typically shade is kind of a slower process, but I build it up from area to area. Yeah, it's all layering. I think you and I kind of do the same thing. Yo, what's up with this horn, dude? I know that I love drawing horns. Something I'm going to try to do first is I'm trying not to push my occlusion shadows. I have a problem with doing that too soon. So I'm going to have my shadow try to be a bit more consistent. Oh, yours is, you have more value on your side. Mine's like a washed out type well, thing. <laughs> well, add more value in the draw. Well, I'm just saying, you know, but I'm just like, I'm following it. Sorry. I kind of want to break away from. Do you want to, you don't, we got to make it real. Make it realism. <laughs> oh no, I'll make it realism, but I kind of want to make it bigger. I want to add things to it. I this. like this chunk. I like this like right here. I feel like in mine, it's a little bit more darker. Like the occlusions are a little bit more darker. I feel like right here is just this really big chunk. Not in mine specifically, but in my reference. Oh yeah. What, why are you laughing at me, man? 
I just know that... No, I'm laughing because I know that mine's going to stray so far from the reference when I'm finished with this. I know, I'm trying to... I told you I used to do studies all the time, right? Mm-hmm. Thank you, Connie Aki Jelly, for following. Faith says, okay, that makes more sense. I thought it was supposed to be a hard hole. Oh, no, yeah. Sorry, I should have probably wrote that next to it. Altmage says, life is what you make it, school or not. I couldn't, yep. Yeah, oh yeah. That's definitely how I feel about that. Uh, Tibrato says, recruits have also said art school portfolios look the same. They can not They can tell if the student is from, say, Myad or Alverno because it, it's only the projects from the class that all the students have. Yes. This is something that my boss at CG Cookie had a problem with when we'd go to the portfolio shows at my school is everyone had the same projects in their portfolio. And he said part of the reason why mine stood out is because, well, one, I didn't really follow the rules of what I was supposed to include, and I hmm. slid by with a D-. minus. But my portfolio was primarily my swordplay characters and how to, how I drew them. And everyone else had, like, the projects that we worked on in school. So right then and there, he said, I knew that you were working outside of class, and I want a, to hire someone that will do work outside of what they're given. And that's something that I think is very important. So if you guys are going to art school, be sure to work outside of the, just the projects you're given. You know, you got to push that extra mile. Look at the difference between how you and I draw. Actually, yeah, this would be kind of funny because we're drawing the same. This I don't think I've so... ever done this side by side with someone. Yeah, yeah, dude, this is. I mean, we did the, the blind animal, but it's not like the same picture. Why do you keep looking at my picture? Because I like the value. I could see more shadows in yours. Why don't you just imagine them on yours? Because I'm doing a study. I guess. It was more supposed to be like the initial reference to work from. <laughs> Actually, this will be funny because we have, what, 50 minutes? Who can draw the better horn? Ready? Go. You. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like you've, you can draw a pretty solid horn. Either way, I'm going to have fun with this. I oh, yeah, love no, drawing is, horns. Horns are great. Because if you mess up, no one will know. <laughs> That's the beauty about That's doing kinda, organic yeah, actually, shapes. Yeah, it's kind of true. Oh, yeah, are you kidding? Why do you think I love it so much? Why do you think I dislike sci-fi stuff? Because if your lines are off... <sighs> well, that's the one thing with mechanical stuff is that um, every anything... This is one thing, too. If you guys ever draw mechanical stuff... Um, Keep it on point. Yeah, yeah. I mean, everything that's drawn in a mechanic uh, or in a mechanical anything um, has a purpose. So, like, if you're just, like, throwing in just, like, this random here thingamabobber or whatever like that, like... A gear and a hat. A gear and a hat. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, steampunk. Um, <laughs> but if you're doing that, like, come on, man. Like, you, there's, there's a reason for it, you know? Yeah, I'm at the point where I'm not... I'm not going to use the reference anymore. So if you want, I can give you mine. Or no, it'll be the same picture. It'll be the same picture. Just yeah. washed out. Uh, oops. Let me, I'm going to move this over. You're only doing this horn, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, Alex says, can't see Tim's horns. My bad. My bad, guys. Fear Dude says, the screen is kind of yellow. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it's funny. Yours is so blue and mine's yellow. I don't know why that is. Am I, is this thing on the thing? Yeah. It's so bizarre. I want to hear your side too. What was the what were we question? About? Yeah, yeah. I guess ask the question again. Yeah. Well, Altmage says, do you find mental and physical health are more important to pay attention to as a freelancer since it is so time consuming? <laughs> uh, physical health I feel like no artist pays enough attention to. Yeah. Um, mental health. That's an interesting subject matter to work on as a freelancer. I guess Sean would probably be better to answer this. Thank you, Guau Hai, for following. I mean, I can give my two cents, but I would rather have Sean give his first. Um, it's... I don't know, you kind of threw me for a loop in this one. I mean, especially the you know, the, the state of things a little bit. Um, do you want me to answer first? Well, no, 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 no. It's just like, I mean, mental health in anything, I think, should never go ignored. Um, I, I, I kind of, you know, I talked to Tim 
um, about this to where I really did want to uh, have a stream dedicated to, you know, uh, your mental health as, as, as an artist because, you know, anybody who um, does kind of suffer from any type of, like, generalized anxiety disorder or anything that goes even further than that, you know, I think it's one thing to where... Um, and art specifically to where you're definitely like you're in your art is a kind of like this at least the way sometimes you see it it's a representation of you thank you Rainbow. um yeah yeah it's a representation of you and uh when it's not working out you almost feel like you're not working out if that makes sense um and that could really really hurt you know uh, hurt people or and that can kind of hurt yourself and how you see yourself and, and everything like that. So um, mental health, I think, in anything, not just being a freelancer or anything like that, I think is just something that should always be addressed, um, especially if you're not if you're not feeling 100% you, if, you know, if the world tends to be, if you sit there and you're a little bit more apathetic towards things, it's, it's <laughs> this question is, is very, very relatable. Um, and it... Uh, don't ever avoid any type of mental health anything you know that's that's my answer for it. i'm kind of a social justice warrior when it comes yeah. to this stuff so which i i think you need that though cuz i think you need both sides of the story and i feel like i sometimes play the bad cop in this so i'll give you my answer which may not be as kind but i'm i think you need both sides and i think there needs to be a level of understanding regardless of if you are going through a mental health issue or not so the way that I see your mental health when it comes to freelancing is you are going to be given deadlines with the work that you're going to be doing, or you're going mm -hmm. to have dates like conventions that you're going to have things to get done. Regardless of how your state of being is, you have to get stuff done. And you can't, I mean, if you, I know that this is interesting with you here talking about it, but I feel like you're actually pretty good about this, where if you kind of know that sometimes this stuff happens, plan early. So if you know that you have a deadline next week, rather than wait till like next Thursday or Friday, if the due date's Saturday, you start now. Maybe if you're feeling good, you might have a bit of a dip later next week. So you want to plan accordingly. I guess, I guess we're kind of like what you're saying. I also realize like how like skinny my horn is. Um, <laughs> this is super skinny. Um, one thing too, and kind of what, you know, what Tim's saying is that anybody who, who goes through any type of anything, you know, when it comes to this, um, really, really recognize when you're using it as an excuse, you know, um, I, I think there's, there's some of you out there, you know, that, that kind of know, I, um, kind of know me on a, a personal level and I, you know, I have, I have days, I don't have good days. Um, and but you want to recognize when you're not having a good day and but you also don't want to give it this crazy amount of power of like okay since i'm not having this good day um this is this is who i am for the rest of my days and that's not how it you know that that's not how anybody should function um you know, I, I once again, I feel like this question kind of threw me off guard for a second. I feel like I have a lot more to say. I think I would have to write things down a little bit more. I was for say, it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You can give more of a solid answer in the stream about yeah. it. I'll give one more answer to this, and then we'll move on. Because <laughs> I, I know that you have a lot that you'd want to say, and you'd want to say it right. Yeah. So I'm gonna give a bit of tough love, and this isn't directed at anyone. Just based on people that I know, and people that have been trying to get jobs, and they kind of suffer from mental illness of varying degrees. Employers, and it's going to sound harsh, but I guess you need to hear it. Employers don't care. If they want an art piece from an artist, they want it by a certain deadline. They want the quality to be at wherever it is that they're expecting from you. And if you come back at them when it's due and you say, well, I've been in a slump or blah, 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 they don't care. They will fire you and they will hire someone else. So, it's one of those things where if you have anxiety or if you have issues that you know you have to work through sometimes, work heavily when you're doing well. Yeah. Oh, yeah. When you have a high and you have a good drawing day, just pump it out. 
and get as much done as you can. Because when you're feeling low, I know what it's like to not have a good drawing day and like you don't how, get a lot done. It's not productive. Real quick, I like how both you and I have like barely touched the top. Oh yeah, no, I'm saving it. That's like one of my favorite things. Really? To, yeah. I'm struggling with that right now. I mean, doing this texture heavy stuff is really fun for me right now, but we still have like 30 minutes. So I'm, no, 40. I have 40 minutes to do more detail on this. Yeah. Do you know how exciting that is for me? <laughs> doing organic forms like this is really exciting. So I think there needs to be a level of truth that needs to be said here because too often... I don't think artists realize how hard this industry actually is. And I never want to sugarcoat anything with you guys because other people just don't care, specifically employers. There will be some, maybe in a blue moon, that are really awesome and will let you take time off and give you the time that you need, whatever it might be. But more often than not, they will just dump you and hire someone else. So I mean, work but... with it. Don't work against it. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's... De definitely like this is something that i agree with especially you know having um or, or at least dealing with with a level of you know um uh anxiety and and, and you know other funny silly thoughts um it's it's definitely uh when you say things essentially to where you know you're like why is this not happening what is this not working like how come i'm doing everything right or uh, or people ask you, they're like, well, I'm just, I'm feeling rough today. Like, I don't want to do anything. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. Essentially, that's not really you talking, at least in my mind. Um, I know that when you separate your anxiety and your fears and, um, you know, even your, if you even want to go further in that, if you're feeling, you know, a little bit depressed and everything like that, that essentially isn't you. And it's hard to, um, you know, it's it, it's hard because at times I sound you know very hypocritical, especially Tim. You know, hearing things from me and, mm. and especially coming off you know of a of a very personal moment that I think Tim and I had. Um, but basically, like that's not you. You're using this as this kind of like this shield because it's it's people are very familiar, especially if you're familiar with. Um, you know, be feeling sad or anything like that. Like it's, it's a, it's very familiar. Uh, and people tend to like familiarity, you know, they tend to sit in it and they don't try and push for, um, more. And that's not good because, um, the more and more that you challenge yourself, the more and more that you really, really challenge yourself of just like, you know, doing this, I'm going to be honest guys, like there, I, you know, Tim and I were talking and everything like that, and I was struggling with the stream, you know, I was just like, I, I was having a rough time with it. And Tim told me, he's like, honestly, some of the best things that you can do is just go out and challenge yourself and just do it. When and, it's hard. And it's hard. It is hard, man. No, when it's hard. Oh, when it's hard. Yeah, yeah. When it's hard, it's hard. It is, you know. Um, Once you prove to yourself you can do it when it's hard, you're like, wow, I didn't think I had it in me. Mm -hmm. You know? Um. But then you, you know, then you, you've almost like proven to yourself to where you're like, oh, wow, like I can, like I can actually, you know, do this in a way. So once again, this is, there's much more that I would actually like to talk about on this subject matter. Um, the subject matter is very, it's very near and dear to me. Um, I don't like when people feel uh, bad about themselves because it's a familiar feeling and so I think this is def this definitely should be another topic for a you know different stream. I'm so excited right yeah. now. I want to add all these like swirls and stuff in the horns that I can kind of see it. And I'm like, okay, I have a half hour. I think I can do it. You know, uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna do like all these like swoopy little tie dye swirls. I know I kind of I, I I might have went a little crazy with this. I didn't. Uh, here, let me catch on, on the streams while you're doing that. Yeah, yeah, I might have screwed up a bit. Uh, Faith says, you are being competitive, Tim. Who can draw a better horn? Didn't you just talk about being competitive? I'm one of the most competitive Tim, yeah, people Tim's I know. Tim's a naturally competitive person. And I'm, believe me, hearing it from Tim and everything, that, it don't bug me. I know. It's it, one of those things I've... I'm so grateful that I have been competitive all my life because I think it's gotten me to where I am now. And it will continue to push me because I feel like I'm never satisfied with the level that I'm at. 
And I think it is that competitive nature that I have in me. But I've learned how to be healthy about it. Me and Pui have a very healthy con competitiveness to us. And it's usually about who can make the most money. But really deep down, it's we want to keep pushing each other so that we don't just settle and plateau to be comfortable with what level we're at. Uh, Lychee says, do you think doing studies as a beginner should be, should they be done close to what the reference looks like in reality than an exaggerated version? Being if one is trying to learn how a thing works before trying to design from what's learned, or do you think it's okay to tweak a bit of your studies, such as how people plan air paint and cherry pick how they want to portray the piece? I think whatever gets you the best result, but I also think in the be- very beginning, it should really, really try and be, be spot bold. on. Yeah, yeah. I-, I think in the very beginning, it should try and be spot on. I think, like, if you're even doing what Sean and I are doing right now, do a- the realistic horn reference on one, and then next to it, do, like, your exaggerated stylized version. Mm-hmm. Honestly, I think the more that you do, the better. And I don't think it's good just to be, like, one or the other. Hey, Angela, how are you doing? Uh, she says, nice Monster Hunter shirt. Thank you. Key gave it to me. Uh, it's a good little. It's a good little neko. <laughs> oh, Bryn! It's the Bryn we know. Yeah, says, yeah. Hey boys, considering Carrie freaking ditched me, how was C2E2? It was awesome. <laughs> uh, we could talk about that. I think after con season's over, we're gonna do like a wrap up on all the the cons we went to and which what were our high points, what were our low points. Yeah, that'd be great. But overall, I had a great experience. Uh, Jim says. I had a deadline of a week for a painting recently. I busted it out every night. I hated almost every step of the process. The colors weren't turning out right. The perspective was continually off. I found myself wanting to put my hand through the canvas often. When it was finally done, I wanted to do another painting. What is wrong with me, and is this normal and healthy? Um, uh, that is Sean's process. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's really mine, man. Like You get to a point... Oh, boy, man. This, is, this, is, this, is, this stream is a lot heavier than I thought it was going to be. Um... <laughs> It really is. Just as of recently, I started a drawing, and I know you're having a good time. I am so um, excited. Yeah. <laughs> um, just as of recently, I started a drawing, and I wasn't I wasn't happy with it. Um, I wasn't happy with it at all. And I ended up, I legitimately threw it out. Uh, you know, I was like, you know what? I was like, this isn't me. This isn't what I want to do. I mean, like that. Um, you, on the other hand, I mean, you had a deadline and you worked on it and you made it like that's, you know, you, you did the, you did the yeah. right thing. Like mine was a, you know, mine was a personal project and I'm like, well, you know, like, nope, I don't want to do it. Um, so yeah, yeah, no, I mean, congrats to you for sticking it out type of thing. This, there's a, there's a moment and it's something that I'm still struggling with and learning with is that there's a process, like there's, you know, there's good things to a to a very like strict process, but then there's also very bad things that can come out of it. Um, to where you create this, you don't give yourself you know this enough credit to your own skills that you know how to do. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and then eventually it turns into like you start to hate everything that you do and um, all this stuff, and it starts to turn like turn on you. So, um, no, I don't think it's a healthy process. Um, I, I definitely think to have an understanding of knowing how you work best and if you work best on like a strict process of just like wanting things to be exact and stuff like that but then I also think too is that play to your strengths as much as you can know know what we uh, you do best at um and you go from there and uh you really really try your best with your process try and shake it up know what you do strongest in your process and go from there I, lo- I, I I feel like I'm I've been talking so, so much. Excited. I feel like I've been talking so much that like my my thing is is real silly. Oh, I like this horn so much. I I want to do a bigger. I wish I would have done it on a different piece of paper because yeah, now I'm at like an awkward near the edge point of it. But it has like this cool. It almost looks like a three. That's like a really <laughs> giant on the top. I don't I don't know. I'm having fun with this one. I feel like we should do a horn stream. I could draw horns for two hours straight and not get bored. Uh, where are we? There we go. Oh, Mage says, I only ask because I've recently tried more physical activity and had to plan in relax time now. I feel some people push too hard to burn out, plus others still don't try hard enough. Both ways, I feel people are still mentally tough on themselves. Oh, my, my gut reaction to that was, I would rather you be the first than the latter. I think if you're not trying hard enough and you're feeling burnt out then 
well, then obviously there's there's something more to the problem. Yeah. Believe me, I, I agree with you when it comes to that. I also think um, artists have a bad habit of being lazy and blaming other things or making excuses for why they can't get things done. I'm not, I don't want to generalize artists, but I see this all the time. And when I talk with artists, rather than listing to me their accomplishments or what they're excited to work on, they tell me why they haven't been able to work on things. And there's a very distinct difference between an artist that talks about why they can't do something and an artist that talks about what they want to do next. Mm-hmm. And I think you always want to be the artist that talks about what they want to do next, because then you're focusing on the future and what you're going to work on rather than focusing on what's hindering you from creating the art you want to create. So keep that in mind while you're talking to someone about your art. Try to catch yourself if you're talking about or if you're making excuses or if you're listing reasons why you haven't been able to do the things you have. I've, yeah, no, I, no, no, no. I mean, it goes back to like when it comes to, sorry to interrupt, but I, I, I just, no, no, no. I just really think this is important to where when it comes to when you're letting your anxiety and your fear and your depression run you, um, you know, that's not good, honestly. Like it's not good. And when you start to use it as an excuse, I think I've told this, I think I've said this to Tim countless of times when, you use it as an excuse. Um, it's not healthy, and you don't get a lot of work done. And it's mm-hmm. it's a lot easier said than done because, believe me, like I don't want to, you know, upset anybody out there when it when it comes to this stuff. But I, I definitely think to recognize when you're feeling off is very very important. Um, and then catch yourself with the excuses, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Uh, Altmade says, throws in happy sparkles and less heavy topics. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Uh, Lychee says, have any of you set a sketchbook on fire? Uh, I've burned... Oh, I don't know if I should be saying this on the stream. Uh, last year, I burned a lot of my old art that were prints that I knew I wasn't going to sell anymore. And not a lot of them. I did like a small stack and then I recycled the rest. But for me, it was kind of a letting go type process. I don't, uh, I don't own a sketchbook. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We got to get you one. Alex says, how about a 24 hour stream of drawing nothing but horns? Sign me up. Let's go. Fate says, Sean is like, let's get real. And Tim is like, oh my gosh, look at my horn. <laughs> Classic. Classic. All the time, yeah. Uh, did you? Alt Mage says, I don't partake in pity parties anymore. They are wasted time. Yes. And when you get invited to them, don't RSVP. <laughs> there are too often uh, artists that I... And you know what? I think Sean may think he is in that, but I do not think Sean is at all. I, I think know. the artists that are really in the pity party mentality are the ones that constantly are making excuses for why they don't get anything done or not productive. Sean's still productive. I think where he gets caught up is he is, he takes his time with his pieces and a lot of time per piece. So when he's not pumping them out as quickly as the roommates around him, I think that is an intimidation. I think there is some level of comparison going on and that can be detrimental. But you you really, and this is for everyone out there, you really shouldn't be comparing yourself to anyone but yourself. And that can be hard because too often we look at, well, who's popular on Instagram? What are they doing? Should I be doing something like that? Like, and It's good to learn from them, but you should never look at yourself as direct comparison for levels of success. I think Sean's pieces are super successful. And yeah, they, they, and they require more time, but the end result, I think, caters to a more finished product where someone like, uh, even in the house, uh, Jonas, Tyler, and Key are much faster artists, but their finished product isn't going to be a gallery piece like something like Sean would do. And it just kind of depends on what type of artist you are. I guess that's weird um, jumping on that, you know, because I, I've, you know, I, I've told you that, you know, like I've, I've, I've always been criticized for how slow that I move when it comes to making artwork. Um, it's always been like, you know, like, oh, you're, you know, oh, we like, you're just making this, you're just making this, you know, like that, or like being particular. But I mean, that's also, you know, in the tattoo field where I was really criticized for that. Um, 
I guess it's weird because sometimes I get caught up into thinking like, you know, like this should, like this should, this shouldn't be taking this long, you know? Yeah. I guess it's, it, I, I feel like it shouldn't be taking this long and I just, I don't know how I can kind of get out of my head about that some days. Kim, you're much better at drawing horns than I am. <laughs> I am having so much fun with this. I'm glad, yeah, yeah. Your horns are good. Like, I, I really want to give it a deep gradient, too. But I'm kind of like, ah, I like how it looks. You know what, though? We're taking the risk. This is a stream where I am taking risk live. Here we go. Here we go. You saw it first. Live risk. And last, if I feel it doesn't turn out well. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Lychee says, what's your guys' favorite comfort food? Um, I love, like, like really hot, like, General Tso's anything. <laughs> 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 or, like, or, like, just, yeah, I want to say just, like, really hot, crappy Chinese food. That's my favorite. So, there's these cookies. <laughs> <laughs> I buy them every week. They are actually. I don't even know what they're called. I'm gonna go grab one. They're, they're no. Favorite. They're wait. Are they the? Dude, can you get one? Can I have one? Yeah, I chocolate chip or peanut butter. Peanut butter all the time. Yeah. Ah, okay. Yeah. Oops. Oh. Okay. For those of you who don't know, I am. Uh, vegan and I still have a sweet tooth. That doesn't mean I have to like give up things that are awesome in life. So I was on a search for a good vegan cookie for a while. This is the holy grail of vegan cookies. Lenny and Larry's, let me tell you, they are not just an alternative, they are replacements. <laughs> I love these cookies and they come in a lot of different flavors. They have protein, which is something that Usually, vegans tend to not get enough of, and I think they're delicious. Yeah. There you go. No, I didn't want, like, I want to share it. Oh, yeah, I'll take yeah. it. I'll partake. <laughs> um, I love those cookies, but if I had to pick another comfort food, oh, not to sound like you basic. Just wanna, like, split it in half, yeah. is that okay? I really like carrots. I find myself munching That's on them throughout basic. the day. Who actually likes carrots? I'll take the smaller side. I screwed up. Thank you. Mm. Thanks, man. So good. But I definitely have one of these cookies every day. All right. Well, so I'm... we have about 20 some minutes left. What I'm going to do here. Oh, I know that this is more supposed to be on convex and concave. So going through really quick. The ridges here, these are convex. They're bubbling out. And essentially, I'm just ridging it all the way down in the direction that the horn is growing out of the skull. These ridges here are concave. And that creates this really cool, almost like box that's been pulled and swirled. And it's giving the illusion of depth from the way that we're shading it. Now, I'm gonna get a little more fantastical. I feel like this is kind of where I break realism the way that i'm going to shade this down here is not going to be realistic but it's going to be fun thank you brain malfunction for following hmm. so i'm going to keep shading and doing these little details i'm going to add these little swirls that i got pretty excited about oh boy Tim, i'm feeling rough about this horn feeling rough well <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I feel like mine's pretty on point. Well, yeah, because you draw horns all the time. No, I was just trying to think of another horn pun. That was the first one that came to mind. Um. <laughs> oh, man. If you guys haven't tried just experimenting drawing horns, I would give it a try. I should probably just... I guess it's weird. I feel like I'm starting to get into that weird, like, this isn't good type thing. And... Keep working it. Mm. So, oh, actually, this is a good thing to talk about right now. Sean's going through what I sometimes feel in, like, the first 30% of the drawing. 
I don't like the way it, if I don't like the way it looks, I get really upset. And then I start to question, what am I doing wrong? How can I make this better? And it, I feel uncomfortable having anyone look at it while I'm drawing. And I'm sure you guys have caught me on a stream where I'm just not, I'm not feeling it. And it's even more uncomfortable to know that this is going to be live and it's going to be put on YouTube most likely. But there comes a point in my drawing where I have to trust my intuition. So even with this, I know I can make this horn. Well, I mean, this one actually turned out kind of the way that I wanted it to. So now I'm just having fun with it. But like, let's say you were in the, the spot that Sean is where he's not, he's not sure. He's not sure if he's liking the way it's looking. That's when you really got to push yourself. And you're going to have a fight or flight scenario. Sean's fighting it right now because he's continuing to work on it. I'm trying. I'm trying my best I feel my best too many here, artists yeah. give up in this moment. And I'm telling you, if you can push through it a few times and get to that point where you're really stuck and you're caught in your head and then push through, you'll always be able to. I've had to fight with myself internally on, should I start over on a piece so many times? And I, I know I can push through. I trust my taste level. I trust the way I render. And sometimes it doesn't always turn out, if I was honest with you. But the times where I push through and I feel it does work out, it's it's so rewarding. And I want you guys to experience that as well. Oh, yeah, we're going to give it that deep gradient. Hmm. Oh, yeah, guys. I would definitely do a really long horn stream if you guys would want to see that one Did time. you do a horn stream before? Mm-hmm. Like one where I kind of want to do an animal that just has, like, a bunch of horns. <laughs> like, random. Or I could do, like, a profile and do as many different types of horns as I can. Yeah, that'd be fun. Bark, 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 bark. Oh boy, we're getting silent. That means we're working. Mm -hmm. That always means that I'm really focused. So to make the highlights pop out even further on this horn here, I'm going to give a subtle, not a full gradient, it's almost kind of like a point gradient where you pick a point and then you gradient out. So I'm only going to do it here, not on the entire image. You can see how that just lifts the horn off the page a bit more. Uh, Nico says, your cute little tofu piece is what made me follow you. My cute little tofu piece. I don't know if I know what you're talking no. about. Was it the one that Gabe did of me? Is it an old one? I don't know. Did I draw tofu before? I actually don't know what you're talking about. Uh, Lychee says, what's the cutest subject topic of thing that you ever drew in your life? Um, I did a Jirachi tattoo that was super cute. It was way cute. It was probably the cutest thing I've ever made, ever, in my entire life. It was super cute. Um, oh, but then, actually, I made these uh, little jazz robots. <laughs> um, and then, so, alright, so I drew this big guy. And he was all big and burly, and he had a stop sign uh, guitar. But then on top of him was this little tiny little dude. Um, and he had this little tiny, like, circle head or, like, square or what, or like cylinder head. It was, like, this one little eye. And he was just toot toot in a way. I put little music notes coming out of him. I think he's really cute. I think they're all really cute. I'll even show you. I'll show you, world. <laughs> It's really cute. <clears throat> the cutest thing I've ever drawn. Man. I think I'm just gonna say I did a rendition of a pot head, which was literally a pot. Um, it was a little robot with a pot on its head, and he had like an on and off switch on his belly, and he just heated up things. That was his purpose. Look at this little buddy, just toot toot in a way. Look at him toot toot. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, he's cute. And he's just poop poop. As all these guys right here, they're all like this guy right here is going to town. Look at him. Dooping away. 
stooping away. This guy's all banging on some trash cans. Oh, he's not there yet, but this guy is all big, and he's like, oh, I got this, I got this stop sign guitar. It's a good time. And then, toot tooting away. Look at these little toot toots. Little toot toots. Yeah, yeah. On your way off screen. There you go. I mean, you know, we could just. <laughs> <laughs> what other cute things have I drawn? We're doing a bunch of cute things, man. Uh, Alex says, I remember suggesting a horn tutorial stream a bunch of times. It'd be a dream come true. <gasps> no, it ate my lead. Uh oh. Guys, no. Oh, this is one of my longer pencils. No. Sean, can you bang this really hard on the garbage so it comes out? Wait, where is it stuck? Yeah. It's stuck in there? Yeah. You just do this. Oop, I didn't want it to mess up your area. Oop, no, shot on your pants. Doesn't matter. See how tough it is? I know. It's really bad. I guess I'll get a question in while we're doing oh, it. it. There you go. Uh, Zellrad says, I'm having a problem, thank you, with finishing my works. I usually start drawing something, but when I'm done with sketching, I get bored and start another piece. Any advice? I'm running low on space to store any unfinished works. Yeah, so I, I used to do this a lot more where I backburn pieces. I still do it to an extent, but... You you gotta finish pieces as well. Oftentimes, what yeah, happens is while you're working on one piece, you might be thinking of a really great idea for your next piece, but if you don't finish the current one, you'll never have anything done. So it's good to you know think and start to brainstorm about your next piece, but you have to challenge yourself to get that one done, so you can prove to yourself one that you can finish it, and two that you can carry a piece from start to finish. And you don't want to be one of those artists that go halfway and then drop. Halfway drop, halfway drop. And it becomes habitual if you do that over and over and over again. So be careful with that. I actually have a question for you as a teacher. Yeah. And if you could help me out. Yeah. What's going on with this horn? Okay. I want you to help so me right now. We're going to do a live critique session. Live help. Now, usually with Sean, I don't sugarcoat things. So we're going to jump right into this. That's fine. Okay, so right now... The values are all over the place where at the top of this is catching the light source, right? Yeah, yeah. And this is definitely in shadow. Mm -hmm. But if you're working with the reference, see how light this area is in that reference? Yeah. So, do you mind? No, just do what you got to do, man. So, I would carry this lighter almost to the extent that you did on the top of the horn there. Okay. And then, oh yeah, you get you to get a little skinny here. I got way too skinny everywhere. Uh... I think I would redo this area completely because I know you can do a better shape there. Where? This this end piece here. I would even make this skinnier to match the skinniness that you played here. Okay. Yeah, yeah. This double edge is kind of strange. Well, that's just that. I think that was a racer mark. Ooh, shot my super extend. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, screwing up here. Uh, I like these thicker shadows. Um, and then the way that you're carrying these ridges, carry them over. I'm too. struggling. Yeah, these are the, those are ridges I'm really struggling with. Okay, because I don't think mm -mm, I don't think I made enough of a concaveness. I think I made it too flat. Cause yours, you could see move like that. And mine tend yeah. to be just a little bit more straight. Well, the other down. thing that I'm seeing is these all seem to be like equally spaced. Yeah, yeah. Where, see, like in this reference, I really like, so these two are equally, and mm -hmm. then there's like that line in between that one. And I think that's why this part's so interesting is because it has such skinny over there. Yeah. See, right. I keep working with it. I see that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, those are yours. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I feel like I've done horns so often, and I, I feel like Alan's techniques I kind of steal from. So I think that's why I have a lot of fun with, to be honest, I feel like I'm kind of autopiling this right now. I just love drawing horns. Let's 
So now here, I'm gonna do a reverse gradient. I'm gonna let the inside of this horn be more white, or that paper texture, and I'm gonna push the value out. And this is definitely where I start to break realism. It might be have a textured realism to it, but in terms of lighting, I'm throwing the rules out the window. See how it kind of creates that contrast going on in there? And I'm not, I'm doing my best not to line this out right now. A really bad habit with wanting to give lines to everything. And as much as I enjoy it, I, I do want to try some new techniques with my stuff. I've definitely found myself in a safer mode in the past few months. Which you guys will recognize too, and then it's up to you to kind of push it or not push it. And there are times where if I kind of catch myself relying on what I know will work for too long, I'll get really upset with myself. I'll kind of be down on my art and I'll look at it very critically and almost in a way where I don't even believe I'm, I'm trying as much anymore and that's when I really get upset with myself. Oh my God, I love this horn. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Nico says, yes, sorry, you posted it, but he made it. Yes. Okay, I was going to say, I don't I don't think I've done tofu. Uh, but I thought it was so cool that you were a vegan too, so I followed you based on that alone. Well, thank you. Oh, cool. Fear Dude says, that's so cute. Cole Wheeler says, who decides what is done if not the person doing the drawing or people viewing it? You do. You do. You do. You get to be the person deciding when it is done. Uh, Lychee says, quick question, but what's the best way you guys found to stop doing chicken scratchy, non-committal poopy lines? Oh. poo, -poo lines. I, can I talk about this one? Sure. Because I feel like I do pretty big lines in my stuff. Um, at least yeah. not right now, but so like with this, like like let's say like this specifically, if you've seen my artwork, it's, it's pretty uh, outline heavy. Um, but so let's say you have this. And normally what you actually start with is actually kind of silly, non-committal, poopy lines, you know? Um, but then if you really want to get into it, like, that's kind of when you, like, tighten up, you look at the piece of paper, and you really follow those lines. And you you just kind of uh, really focus and just push through them. I, you know, I do, <gasps> I do kind of that. I know it's bad, but I know, I know, but what? No, nothing, you... Those are some hard lines. Oh yeah, dude, that's like hard line. Like, I mean, if you want to do a hard line, like that's 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 what I do, man. You've been you've seen my hard line stuff. My knuckles go white sometimes. <laughs> that's true. That's very true. Uh, so the way that I would stop doing it, and I kind of had to swallow my stubbornness in college because in life drawing is when I learned that I was chicken scratchy, and my life drawing teacher would always come behind me and be like, "Stop." Or she would tap me and be like, chicken scratch. <laughs> I would hear that all the time. Uh, basically, I started, and I still get reluctant to this day, but it's drawing with your arm, not your wrist. And it's the idea of doing more loose gestural starts to your stuff rather than trying Ooh. to like edge it out with chicken scratch. I still do it a bit. Uh, I've learned to be a little more comfortable with having this kind of looseness to my blueprint of what I'm, where I'm working on. And then I'll tighten up the lines that I feel strong about. So it's something that you have to be aware of. And while you're working, just ask yourself, am I chicken scratching or am I trying to actually get the gesture first? And then I'm finding the line that works best. Uh, Jim says, just out of curiosity, what are your astrological signs if you're into that sort of thing? Sean hates I it. I hate it. He hates so it. So no, you're not going to know mine. Sorry. Uh <laughs> He's a Virgo. I love these <laughs> things. I'm a Libra. And I, the person I'm talking to is actually really all about this. And they're Gemini. And we talked about uh, what that means for us as a person. I know Sean hates this. Um, but Libra are the scales. My whole life, I hated that I'm the only one that's an object. I'm not an animal or like something cool. And in the last three years, not only have I kind of embraced being the scales, I, I really have come to the conclusion that I am Libra. 
and what that entails of trying to find balance in everything. Mm. I feel like I never lean too far one way or the other and trying to create that balance is important to me in my life. So yeah, I don't know if that helps you with what you're trying to look for. But I, I mean, like Sean says, it, this could just be a whole lot of mumble jumble. I'm a skeptic. But That's I think, my sign. No, a skeptic would be all about astrological signs. No, a skeptic is someone who doesn't believe in it. Uh-uh. Yeah, yeah. If you're skeptical, you're like, ah, no, I'm skeptical about it. What? <laughs> no. Skeptic. Relating to the theory that certain knowledge is impossible. Yeah. There's generally a questioning attitude or doubt towards one or more items. Oh, then yeah, you are yeah, a skeptic. I am a skeptic. Yeah. I'm about it. <laughs> I'm not. I'm so sorry. I, I literally can't stand astrology. Sean hates putting things into boxes, even though he does it all the time. I do it all the time, but... Astrology is just it's oof. Oof. fascinating. No, I think I think people put I'm never mind. I'm not gonna rant. Oh, were, were you gonna put the people that look at astrological no, signs no. in a box? Were I you gonna they, categorize no, them? No, I think they put too much weight into it and they have them they have it serve as like this is who I am. And uh but like it makes me upset. Because it's like, I have these qualities, and so does everyone else. I think really, actually, what I'm mad, more mad about, I think I take it more on a personal level, is that my sister loves this stuff. My sister's like, I love astrological signs. Um, but the way, though, that she puts so much weight on them is that she will not talk to people who she's not compatible with. <laughs> and... Um, I hate that because it's like you're not allowing this person this chance to kind of show them like, oh, hey, maybe they are a nice person and not a Scorpio, you know? So it's like... Maybe their signs aren't compatible. You don't know. <laughs> it's, no, it's just like it's... <laughs> Give it a chance. That's all I'm saying. I don't want to talk about it because I don't rant about it. I don't want to be ranting on your stream. <laughs> uh katie asks it's mercury rent retrograde right now i don't even know what that is katie so i'll tell you what that is because my sister told me what that is she said oh yeah it's totally mercury retrograde right now and that means virgo and gemini are gonna be uh their lives are gonna be absolute crap right now what? um and <laughs> And so, what? And so she... Wait, is that actually affecting Virgos too? Yeah, because apparently they're ruled. I know all this astrology stuff, and I don't want to tell you guys how much that I know of it, because my sister tells me this stuff all the time. But, but apparently, like, the ruling signs or the ruling planets are Virgo and Gemini, and my girlfriend is a Gemini, and I am Virgo. And people are like, my sister literally told me, she's like, uh, you guys are going to have a tough time t communicating with each other and everything you try and do is going to be really bad. And it proved it. So. And I'm just, <laughs> and I'm just like, what up? Um, Katie knows it. I know it. Get on board. And yeah, no, I. The ship's leaving. No. <laughs> and I literally, I can't stand it. I can't stand it. Oh, yeah. Jim asked, but doesn't yeah. Sean find interest in the Myers Briggs personalities test? Yeah, those are great. But it's mm -hmm. definitely no. Definitely not mumble jumble. No, no. There's a science behind that. The people look at their stars and they're like, oh, that me the, the stars pointing that me that way. I must be a good person. It's just like No, it's, it's stupid. It's so stupid. A personality test is just like a oh, th this is a personality test. There's an actual science behind that chemicals and stuff <laughs> i'm so sorry right now stream i didn't realize we were on the stream but i, I legitimately cannot stand astrology Sagi says we need a sean stream no, so you we can don't. hear his rant it sounds fantastic you literally don't you don't there's it's it's like this this massive amount of just like 
of of angst towards this stuff and like i don't I feel like we should find out if ashley also hates them and then you two could just like pour <laughs> everything you have on it <laughs> yeah no like i don't want no Mm-mm. uh caroline says my husband is a libra also we have been together 35 years having relationships with people who are not astrologically compatible teaches you to be patient and adaptable <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. I'm glad you and your husband have been together for so long. <laughs> I really am. Even though you're the same sign, that can be a struggle. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I'm so... I gotta, I gotta step away for like two seconds. <laughs> All right, Sean will be right back. For like two seconds. For like two seconds. Let me cool off for a second. He's going to read his sign of the day reading. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Fate says, I totally agree with you, Sean. It's pretty dumb. If you think it's dumb. Uh, Fear Dude says, I'm so with Sean, LOL. Guys. Guys. All right. <laughs> I don't want to get ranty on the stream, so. Too late. Too late. It already happened. Yeah, yeah. And I'm having so much fun with these horns. I actually was thinking of, um, what's the Zodiac sign? The Aries one. Oh, wait. That's the, Is it Aries? That's the... Or is it the other one? There's like two of them. No, it is Aries. Aries is the ram. Yeah. That's what the stream is based off today. We are actually funded by the astrologicalscience.com. I will have a t-shirt for Sean next week. <laughs> I feel like that's what I should start buying you. Like Virgo apparel. <laughs> I get you rings, get you the Burt Stone. What's your Burt? What's your Zodiac Stone? I don't know. I will. There's a stone. You. There's an actual stone. Yeah, everyone. So yours is. Oh, you have five. No. No. What? No. 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 Hold on. Oh, are they all green though? Yeah. I like green. Coincidence. Oh, coincidence. I think not. <laughs> I'm done with this horn. <laughs> I'm done. Stream's done. <laughs> It'd be uh. I want, I'm kind of curious to know what mine is, actually. I feel oh, yeah, like mine's I should, sapphire. I, I feel this. like I should know this because I tattooed uh, these colors on people. Oh, wait. Yours is right there, carnelian. Yeah. That sounds red. That does sound red. Yeah. I, I think... wonder if it's a deep red. Oh, no. <laughs> it's a... Yeah, I would say that's your color. That's like an orangey color. Crystallite? Yeah. Oh, my God. This is yellow. Ah, oh, wait. That's a pear dot. What's a <clears throat> Really? That's my color? Oh, that's a nice color. Oh my god, I gotta stop. I, I literally hate this stuff. Who brought this up? Who brought up <laughs> the astrology stuff? Who actually brought it up? Thank I, you. I can't. <laughs> yeah, I um, I can't. How much time do? Oh, we're already we're already. Oh man, I got so sucked into astrology sense. No, I really like this horn too. What's the matter? I gotta leave. No. That's okay. Okay. Well, what time you gotta leave? You gotta leave like now, now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, that is the horn for today. So I guess we'll do a recap really quick. So this stream, which was not meant to be about astrological signs, what was more about convex and concave? Convex basically pushes out. Think of jutting it out and think of rounding it out in a 3D form. Concave is pushing in. And you can see how you apply that to a real life scenario because sometimes just doing little simple shapes, you might not get the direct correlation of how does this relate to what I'm, I want to draw. Besides, like I'm not going to draw a button too often in like flat, straight on perspective. Oh, um, actually there was a comment that Altmage had, uh, they said what con concave is a cave, and then convex, there's an X, so don't go in the cave. <laughs> That's what it would be. Don't go in the cave. <laughs> oh, you guys are... So it's not a cave. <laughs> um, so then going forward, then we talked about the hard versus soft edge, and they're, these are both concave because they're pushed in. But you can kind of see the difference between a hard edge versus soft. I always think of a soft edge as when you draw something in the sand and then one wave of water comes over and it creates that nice slope. And then instead of doing a hard edge with your pencil, you kind of create the softer look. 
to the edges all around. And when you apply that to an actual piece that you want to work on, have fun with it. I think horns are probably the best example of concave and convex meeting like right next to each other. I would go for it. I would honestly practice doing a horn. I will do a live stream with just horns for, I don't know about 24 hours, but I can go for a while. And I'm sure Sean would want to jump in for a little bit of that too. And I mean, we'll, if, if, but if you bring up this astrology stuff, I'm leaving. Sean's out. I'm leaving, guys. He's out. Virgos tend to be very impatient. <laughs> <laughs> They're very temperamental when it comes to this kind of thing. You have to be very careful with Virgos. Oh, my God. Okay. Uh, well, thank you guys again for coming. Oh, boy. And thank you, Knitted, for following. Uh, we do these every Wednesday at 2 p.m. Central Time. Uh, next week will be the critique stream. Sean's going to be making the post forum on our discord channel so if you have a piece you would like us to critique live you can post it below there's a link to it and yeah i think that's all i got for today sean any last words um like always please oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh like always um please be nice to yourselves uh you could be really mean to yourself sometimes but don't do that yeah please be nice to yourself <laughs> Please be nice to yourselves. Whether whatever you are, whatever you relate to, whatever you think you might be, whatever anything like that. Just remember, just please whatever be the nice stars to align yourself. You in category. <laughs> please. This is actually serious, so please be nice. <laughs> Sean's right though. Take care of yourselves. Be kind to one another. That's something that I think we should say at least once in every stream. Mm -hmm. Be kind to each other. Okay, that's all we got for today. So thank you guys, and hopefully we'll see you next week. All right. Bye, everyone. Bye, 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 bye. And I'll be posting these on YouTube uh, tomorrow. Okay, bye. Bye.